5. To block this call and all future calls, press 7. To reject this call, hang up now. You may begin speaking now. Hello, welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. It is Wednesday, October 23rd, and I would like to start this out um, this way. Terry O'Neill, 12-24-1955, born, died July the 11th, 2024. Sammy Cisneros, 8-31-1963, died July the 11th, 2004. Roy Joey, born September the 7th, 1951, died July the 13th, 2024. Jonathan Nice. Born May the 26th, 1950, died July 13th, 2024. Louis, Louis Williams, born September 28th, 1952, died July 14th, 2024. Michael Dickoff, born March the 3rd, 1962, died July the 24th, 2024. Timothy Taffy, born June the 26th, 1945, died um, August the 1st, 2024. Ruben Perez, born October the 3rd, 1985, died September 4th, 2024. Thomas Wood, born September the 13th, 1956, died September the 8th, 8th, 2024. James Snyder, born July 26th, 1975, died August the 8th, 2024. Vincent is, Vincent Oh, Ricciardo, Rosario, Rosario, Rosardo, I'm sorry, born October the 8th, 1945, died September 17, 2024. Anthony Miffin, born September 2nd, 1982, died August 19th, 2024. Jose uh, Nuevas, born Nevis, I'm sorry, born September 25th, 1978, died August 22nd, 2024. Gonzalez George, born September the 10th, 1956, died September 6, 2024. Jamie Owens, born June the 9th, 1971, died September the 11th, 2024. Richard Kurtz, born May the 12th, 1945, died right here at the Butner Federal Prison Hospital, otherwise known as Butner FMC, on September the 14th, 2024. Um, there was a memorial service held October the 10th for these individuals. I don't know. I don't know any, to be honest. Don't know their crimes. Uh, I just felt it necessary to not um, to forget these guys for whatever reason. Uh, Anyway, uh, maybe some thoughts and prayers goes out to them and their family members. Um, otherwise, watching the news uh, countdown until the election, um, saw that former um, White House Chief Secretary General Kelly comes out uh, doing an article, it was a book coming out too or whatever, another hit piece on Trump, talking about Trump as a fascist. And it made me realize something. I wonder how many people in the United States actually know what a fascist is. This call is from a federal prison. I really wonder. And I would bet 50% couldn't if you walked on the streets and you counted 10 people. I bet 50% couldn't explain what a fascist is. I bet, I, I bet they couldn't. And um, uh, that, 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 they, that they say that Trump uh, admires fascists or is the true definition of a fascist, fascist bothers me not. Our system won't allow him to be. There will be people that will say that decisions in the Supreme Court that were handed down recently give him unchecked balances to do whatever he wants. That's not going to happen. Um, it, it's it's just not. And uh, people that think that are, are foolish and people who think that's dumb for uh, or Trump's bad for democracy need not forget what the Democratic Party just did. They just uh, kicked their prime candidate, top candidate out and anointed somebody who was like one of the uh, rated one of the worst vice presidents of the United States. And all of a sudden they're like trying to make her and create her into something else with the help of the mainstream media. It's kind of comical to watch. 
on Fox News this morning. I watched Brian Kilmeade say something about Donald Trump. Brian Kilmeade is a host on Fox News, by the way, um, who's on Fox and Friends in the Morning. Very funny guy, kind of quirky. People either love him or hate him. He's always does do too much prisoner bashing, to be honest. But he came out and said something that's pretty profound, and I think it puts Trump into a lot of... Uh, into, it really puts a lot of context into Donald Trump, and that is, this is a guy who was a business end, born and raised with money, whatever, but had a family business who made billions of dollars. Um, people can argue that it was a lot of swindle money, that he would go in and do these construction projects uh, per, with the intent to bankrupt, to, to bankrupt these people and then take their money and then go ahead and build the, the businesses. Um, a lot of that was done by Trump. A lot of that, that's just actually, there's nothing illegal about it, even though it's scandalous. But uh, this is what I want to say to that. So you get into office. This is what Kilmeade said. Imagine you have a family business that's making a shitload of money. And you're used to telling your family what to do, your kids what to do. You're the top dog. And then you get into politics. And then, you're, then you, you see something. You see a problem. People elected you because you had a business sense of mind. And all of a sudden, people just won't listen to you. Or oh, there's all these different... Uh, Blocks in the way. By the way, I need. I'm going to pause for a second. I need you guys to listen to the singing in the background, and I'll explain. Listen to the singing in the background, please.
more fear, more fear stuff. Uh, anyway, it's just it's such a joke. It, it, it really is. It's all it's all sick. And by the way, Hitler did do some good things. I, there's some comments coming out of there. Um, the Nazis actually did, and I've never in my life been Nazi fans. Um, I used to always argue with my front fellow brothers and white supremacist people who used to talk about what great guys Hitler with the Nazis were, and I'd say, yeah, they lost. Like, at the end of the day, yeah, okay, but they lost. Um, and then there was a guy who was actually um, a black power radical guy who was a super big fan of Hitler, and uh, he was the one that pointed out all the, all the, the advancements in society that the Nazis did. Um, engineering and so forth but they, they actually did a lot of stuff but anyway yeah i do believe that trump has some kind of uh uh thing for dictators because he can get a lot done and i think he still might not understand politics but there's two things you gotta understand groceries being cheaper and um illegal immigration if you just understand those two things uh one of the ways you do you get groceries cheaper is you drill you open up the Keystone Pipeline, you open up fracking and uh, the immigration issue, you start doing mass portations on the right people, um, rounded them up, and uh, could have sent them to places like Afghanistan. That would have been perfect if we would have had Afghanistan still. Just drop them off for the better life that they all want right there. But anyway, okay, getting back to what I was saying. So I had a number one, I got out of prison, and I had it for two years or better. And then I got a new phone, and... When I tried to switch all my apps and all my stuff, it was a fucking nightmare. I mean, it was just, I, I can't explain how many countless hours I spent trying to get that all figured out. And it just dawned on me that I, I didn't keep my phone number up and I have to get a new one and I'm going to have to go through all that again. And I'm just so bummed about that. I'm starting to really, really freak out about the fact that I have to do this electronic stuff. Um, Jesus Christ, really, it is just, uh, I don't know how that's all going to turn out. Before, my grandkids are the ones that actually helped me use the phone, figure out the basics when I got out. Um, and, uh, yeah, but, I, I, you know, it'll work itself out. Uh, I have a friend here that um, has 18 years in. And uh, he's got a clemency petition in, got a life sentence. And if he doesn't get out of clemency, he's going to file for compassionate release because he has cancer. And he's going through some stuff right now because they're having a hard time with the, with the address. Um, because if you get on a compassionate release, you actually need a place to live. Uh, and there are more guys than you would think. Well... Uh, probably less than people would think. I mean, more, more people have addresses than not that they can go to, but it's a burden on people, especially if they have cancer and stuff like that, to say, okay, we need a home address to send somebody to that's sick or dying. Uh, friends are not dying, but um, it just puts a lot of pressure on family members. Um, and uh, once again, I can't help but think um, just, uh, you know, how fortunate I am for making out of that life sentence. And uh, today I was walking in the track here, and I remember back in 2007 walking the same track, and, it, and I dreaming about the day I was going to get out, um, you know, or, or just, just wondering, wondering what life can be like someday. Um, never would have thought that it turned out the way it did when I got out, and that, that's good and bad, you know. But uh, nevertheless, did make it out just so much to be grateful for still and i'm in a i'm in a situation where it's just just completely up to me when i get out so it just that's it is what it is no more people to fall back on um no more people to help uh it's this call is from a federal prison that'll be okay i'm gonna i'll be fine but having said that yeah um i have a list of all that i've talked about this before probably several times i've got a list i'm gonna first day I'm going to go get food stamps for three months, no more than three months. That's my goal. I don't want to be one of those people. Cable. Uh, I even got a list of food that I will buy. I said this before too. I've got a list of food that I'm going to live on and how I'm going to prepare my meals. I'm doing all this. <laughs> like I'm getting this, like, you know, I, I have to, I have to have a routine, you know, and, uh, I do want some animals and I think I want a pig. <laughs> I have a, an area in my yard that stays uh, marshy, mushy, uh, 
it would be the perfect place for a pig. And I think I'm going to get a big pig and put a pig there. I think. We'll see. And for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, a puppy. 100% a puppy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's about it. What else? Oh, uh, yeah. So there's people, a lot of people in here that do have hope that Biden's going to do the clemency. Uh, this isn't nothing new. I've talked about it before. But, um, I don't know. Biden would do himself really great service if he did do mass clemencies or mass pardons or whatever you want to say. Um, but I don't, I, don't, I just, I don't even know if he knows what those are anymore. You know, the, the guy, when you see him on TV, it's just so sad. It's just crazy that they try to dupe everybody. Everybody's been duped for four years thinking that that guy's been running something. You know, it's just, he looks like this poor caricature of a person. It's just, it's crazy. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, I think that's about it. I'm just kind of rambling now. Um, thank you for everybody who's been supporting me. Um, you can send money to Cash App, Hartford Holdings, um, No More Prison Cell, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it for now. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for, oh, and go to the top of the section, merchandise, and buy a magnet. And don't forget, if you like this audio, please um, hit the like button and tell your family, friends, neighbors, enemies, etc. And uh, within uh, 90 days, I will be out doing a lot. That's weird. And I'm gaining weight before I go home, and it's fucking sickening. I went from a size 38 to like a 42 again because of those damn shots that I decided to get myself on. Stupid. But, 